We're going to add our all-star panel here. We have Danny Babb, author of The Accidental Landlord. John Rutledge of Rutledge Capital Partners, who promises not to swear this week. And what the hell? <laughs> it is not <laughs> so we just trap. There's a Chairman lawmaker of, in the house. Chairman of the final, uh, Financial Advisory Board, Scott Case, and Sal Piazzolla. <clears throat> he is president and co-owner of Skin Care Company, S&G Hampton Sun. He's a great person to ask questions to about your small business, how he's managing in this economic environment and, Dan also, and Danny and John are going to grill him about how he started his business absolutely and, and Danny is on Twitter so you can log on to Twitter and send Danny send them a tweet at the at Fox Docs okay. the let's Fox get Docs. to yeah with the V yeah all right, right let's right. get to an email from Bill who's writing us from Texas in an effort to create more jobs why doesn't the stimulus package allocate resources to provide banks with guarantees for small business loans Congressman, you want to who wants to take that one first? Congressman, do you? Well, we talked, to, um, as you said already, that the uh, the Fed has set up what almost 15 different programs out there right. to try to provide guarantees and what have you. Um, and part of the overall problem, which is probably where this call is going from, is is that the banks aren't lending. Um, but, but the problem there is, as you sort of begin to dig down to it, is not so much that the banks don't want to, but it's the fact that uh, their credit the way they evaluate the people who they're lending to, their credit standards have gone up. Uh, so we can do all those things and add those other provisions, add the 16th program, I guess, by the Fed <laughs> to do this sort of pro program. But at the end of the day, then the federal government is once again getting involved in an area where we were before, and that sort of brought us to the problem. That is to say, we will be encouraging the banks potentially to be lending to areas where they shouldn't have. That was a CRA, what have you. Now, the caller might be a great caller, and he should be uh, lend. Maybe he should be checking around to his credit union or someplace else if his current bank is not lending. You guys can yeah. tell them how to get them more. Well, <laughs> Let's, let's ditch the entire concept that the government is going to have anything to do with this. Forget the government. They are not going to help you. Um, <laughs> they have their head up their ass. And what you need to do is Two curse do, words do a couple in less of than 10 minutes. Go <laughs> jump on virginmoney.com. Find other people who want to invest in small businesses, keep it in the private sector, get the government out of it. And the Small Business Administration actually is still lending. They're lending through community banks and even the bigger banks if you have a FICO above 700. And start selling your assets. Start looking at things in, in your own home that you can get rid of. Do you have an extra car you don't need? Do you Kids. have some equity in your home at 7% interest? Pull some of that stuff out. Sal, are you finding that you can still get money for your business? Well, it's interesting because uh, when I founded the company, um, I funded it myself. And um, where I got my money from was from my home. I uh, went to a we need to We need to tell people what Sal's business can. is. Yes. No, he, yeah, to tell them. What What's your company do, Sal? Okay. We, um, we are a luxury high-end. And sun skincare and fragrance line company for luxury high-end women uh, men and women men, men too mm -hmm. excellent yep. men too it is awesome product yeah Wonderful. yeah Thank a you. sunless tanning product which is very healthy uh, and tanning products for your body for your face it's it's we, we're we're teaching the um, the consumer to tan to be smart about their uh, tanning and you took out a home equity line of credit how did you you finish how did you fund the business initially you borrowed against your home correct yep uh, <clears throat> my partner and I we we both did the that's same thing and, and that's how we uh, made the investment um, we we saw a uh, void in the market in uh, luxury Sun product and uh, you got any of your stuff with you it, well, yeah, I, I think we do. Uh, my, my call it out. But he had a passion for his product. I mean, we talked about this two weeks ago, right? When you have that entrepreneurial passion, you're willing to risk what you have to make things work. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was very passionate. I, I had the vision. I had the idea. And, and it was up to me to make it happen and put it out there. Let's get a call real quick, guys. On the phone is Mark, for, guys and lady. On the, mar on the phone, Mark from California. Thanks for waiting, Mark. Mark, ask away. Yeah, my question was about the stimulus package that why are the politicians taking a long time to make a decision? I understand that, you know, they need it's a big decision to make, but you know, it's not it's not gonna affect them, it's gonna affect the taxpayers and how they're gonna help. You know? They're worried about saving their butts? They're slow. <laughs> I mean they are not looking out for the rest of us. Could we argue that it's a it, Good that they've taken a step back and they're starting to analyze this thing, Congressman? I would hope. I mean, uh, President Obama was said he wanted to move this thing so quickly. Think what we're talking about here. We're talking about $800 plus billion, the largest expenditure in the, the history of the federal government at one time. To say that we're going to spend that in just a day or two or three or four days or even a week at this point in time is, is 
we wouldn't be doing our job. And if, as a matter of fact, I don't think we'd be doing our job if this bill comes to the floor next uh, Monday or Tuesday. And didn't President Obama say that when he was running for office that uh, he was going to have all the bills that he had before he signs them into law up on some web, pa web page someplace so you could all go to it and everybody could have their two cents on it before he signs it? I think he's already signed a couple bills when he never even did that. So here's a case where we're going to be spending $800 billion or more. Um, and I think this caller would like to know that before he signs off on it or before I vote on it, that he could have his two cents and see what the actual bill is and give it. Your two cents? Uh, my, we, we, talk about this, we talk about this during the week. Economics is my day job. This whole <laughs> stimulus bill is a, is a pile of crap. It is not a good idea. You're appropriating a trillion dollars out of people's pockets and spending it in the way somebody in Washington decides to spend it. It's a terrible idea. So if we could kill it, I would love to kill it. I fear it will pass. But the, but the fact is, and the reason we're here this whole hour, is that don't wait for the government to save you. Don't wait for somebody to come along and offer you a job or somebody to say, please work for me. Get off the butt, get out there, and start a company. Even if you start a company with one person doing one thing, part-time. You can make a little money. Like Danny says, look in the closet, find an old PC, sell it, use that money for working capital. So this is this is about the blue flame coming out of your butt. This is not about waiting around uh, again with for a government flame. solution. Well, you that was a nice segue to the break. It's about small business. It's about starting your own business. Call us, 877-249-9626. When we come back, live from the Senate floor. So guess what? I have to put aside my ego, and I have to work with my colleagues, and again, I want to... Monday. Obama responds to the nation's questions. So what impact will his answers have on lawmakers and his economic plan? David previews the president's first official press conference. Don't miss this special scoreboard, only on Fox Business. Attention, gold prices are near all-time highs. It's your time to cash in and get more for your gold. Since 1960, Gold for More has been paying more for gold than anyone else. More cash for your gold jewelry, necklaces, and bracelets, even gold watches and rings. No matter how broken, beat up, or old, if it's gold, it's sold. It's true. I got $600 for my old gold. All I did was send in some of my broken jewelry, and I got the cash. Call or click now, and we'll send you free of charge our secure gold package. Then place your unwanted gold jewelry in the insured shipping envelope and mail it back to Gold for More. Even the return postage is free. And 24 hours after receiving your package, we'll send you more for your gold. Need the cash right away? Just let us know and we'll instantly direct deposit the cash right into your bank account free. If you're not totally satisfied with the payment offered, your valuables will be returned to you free. Get more for your gold from Gold for More. Call or log on at gold, the number four, more.com now. Sunday. Reinventing the music biz. How is this industry moving and making money? And will it be music to investors' ears? We get answers. Watch only the best on Money for Breakfast Weekend. Your question's your money, and if you want to take your money to start a business... That's what we're here to answer. Let's get to an email. Steve writes, how do I know what businesses will survive in this economy? Mm -hmm. John, you're busy. Doing I'm doing deals. technology, man. I'm doing technology. <laughs> doing deals. Dan, how do you know? Because yeah, well, that's a critical question. It is. It's a very business. critical question. Okay, first of all, we know that when you take your business online, you can uh, expand your reach beyond the United States. Obviously, you have a global market immediately. So that's the very first thing you should always consider doing, even if you have a brick-and-mortar store. The second thing is there are certain areas that are still doing very well, the service sector. People are looking for deals. You could simply create a website that offers coupons where you're getting a kickback for every time a product is sold, for example. So do your homework. First of all, though, find out what you are passionate about and then figure out how <laughs> to or what you need, like in the case of maybe spot remover in John, John's case. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> figure, out, figure, out, <laughs> figure out what it is that you love to do and then go out and do a little bit of market research, just a little bit, and then just go for it. And, the yeah. best and in a market, well, the in the market where the banks are closed, you need to do things that don't use capital. You, right. you don't have working capital. Most people think give me an wait. idea. Most people think Bill Gates is going to show up and give you venture capital. Some it don't happen that way. You sell a used car, <laughs> you get two thousand dollars. You go in your garage and you start something. Sal, how did 
what, what did you start with? What was your bankroll or your working capital? Well, it all started with the idea. You have to come up with an idea and you have to believe in your product. And um, I have to uh, take a step back because I, I worked for the Port Authority and it, I did 21 years with the Port Authority and I felt... They let you out for good behavior or...? Uh, <laughs> let me off on good behavior. Yeah. But um, I, I just always had that creativity and wanted to do more and apply myself and do something different and, um, and, and come out with my own product. And so the last few years of working for the port, I, I kind of did all my homework and investigation. And um, I felt that but the no, market you can was work really while missing. you're working for somebody else. But that's, yeah. that's a great point. You know, yeah. you have a job, right. you, especially people called in earlier, said, I'm not sure I'm going to keep my job. That's when you start thinking about plan yeah. B. Absolutely. This is an interesting story, though. But people criticize government workers and government jobs. But before I got you off do my that, butt, I believed in my product, and I went for it. It was very difficult. It's not easy starting your own company. And like we were talking about financing. How many financing, bucks did you have in your pocket when you started? I didn't have a whole lot. I, I had some dollars, but you know, the bulk of the money came from my home, and, and I, I, I took the gamble. I took the All right. risk. Well, All right. One thing I, I want to bring you in here, though, do you worry that, that this spirit, is it still alive? Will it stay alive even through these tough times? The spirit of just going out and doing your own thing I think in the this spirit, country. I think the spirit will always be alive because that's what uh, America is all about. It's but I was going to answer your first question as to you know which companies will survive. The cynical answer, of course, to that which I'm a little bit cynical is is the is the industries that have the best lobbyists mm -hmm. in, in Washington. And so if you're trying to say where you're going to invest or what have you, just read the Wall Street Journal, read, read some of the uh, OpenSecrets.com or what have you, and you see the industries that are doing best with the bailouts, the industries that are doing best right now are the ones that are, you know, have the huge best lobbyists down in D.C. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, in your case, you didn't need a lobbyist. You were able to just take a, either a mortgage out of your house or something like that to come right. up with the money. The, and that's really the that way was to go. The upside, that, that was just sad. But the <laughs> upside is, that in situations like this, a lot of times the innovators... This is when the innovators come out, so keep your questions coming. Call us at 877-249-9626, or you can email us at feedback at foxbusiness.com. We got small business pros here for you. We'll be right back. Sandals Luxury Included Resorts. Now include a once-in-a-lifetime offer. Book now. Save up to 55%. Call your travel agent or 1-800-SANDALS. Life can be frustrating, but doing taxes doesn't have to be. E-file. Learn more at irs.gov. President Obama answers tough questions on the economy as he takes the podium for his first formal press conference. Monday, David Asman hosts Fox Business Special Report, Presidential Press Conference. Hi, Anthony Sullivan here for Point and Paint. You literally point and paint. Paint an entire room in less than an hour. Here's how it works. Pour your paint into the no-spill tray. Run the point and paint to reusable applicator pad over the wheel. The very same pad works on both smooth surfaces and rough surfaces. Underneath the handle is the swivel pole adapter. Attach any pole. Paint ceilings with no ladder and no splatter. Glide along moldings. Even run circles around light fixtures. Stain the door while it's still on the hinge. Call right now and you'll also receive a free mini edger. It's great for intricate jobs and tight spaces. But wait, we're still not done. We'll even throw in a lifetime supply of replacement pads for just the shipping and processing. That means you get the complete point and paint system with a lifetime supply of replacement heads, all for just $19.99. To order your point and paint for only $19.99 plus shipping and handling, call 1-800-220-1524. That's 1-800-220-1524. Call now. Hey, welcome back to Your Questions, Your Money. Here to answer your questions are New Jersey Congressman Scott Garrett, Danny Babb, author of The Accidental Landlord, John Rutledge of Rutledge Capital Partners, who has sworn already, Chairman of Financial Advisory President Scott Keyes, and Sal Piazzola. He is president and co-owner of skincare company S&G Hampton Sun. Now, you can talk to John and Danny via Twitter. You can log on to Twitter and send them a tweet at the Fox Docs. I love that. <laughs> All right, on the line is Mike from California. Hey, Mike. Hey, good afternoon. 
Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I uh, own several businesses in California, uh, of which I can tell you is the wackiest place on the planet to try to do business. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, I'm down from about 1,100 employees down to about 700, and I'm doing everything I can do to move my businesses out of California. But with that said, I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Why is the paradigm in Congress that it's their money and they're giving it back to us instead of it's our money and letting us keep it? And in that context of that question, uh, why don't they do the common sense business thing that any businessman would do if they were running this country in Congress? For instance, cut the capital gains tax, which would loosen trillions of dollars almost instantly, or eliminate for a period of time the payroll taxes. My daughter makes about 32000 a year. They take $370 every other week out of her check for all federal taxes, not just withholding. Why not let the car companies borrow money at a couple of points over Treasury so they can put the money out into the marketplace to buy automobiles. There's just a thousand different things that a good businessman would do that is not included in, in uh, what I call a pork bill. Congressman. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that this caller, as soon as he, as this program is over, not while this program is on, of course, he, he gets on his phone and calls up his congressman and asks those very same questions. Because I don't know how much support we actually had for our initiatives is doing everything that he's suggesting right there. You know, the idea of you can borrow from Peter to pay Paul um, is always very good um, as long as Paul is out there voting for you. And that's basically what happened in this last election. Is so, There are so many people who realize that we've re reached the tipping point as far as Americans at this point who are on the, uh, the dole, if you will, receive more from the federal government that they're paying back. So to answer his question in short, why does this occur? Well, that's what the, the electorate basically has uh, come to at this point, saying we want more spending, spending, spending. And it takes a little bit more time and energy to uh, articulate uh, all the points that he's making in this call. Don, Scott, why, in, why with why the ex there more in there? I'm going to help translate that into, into the main streets now. With the exception of Scott, who is a great guy, Congress is the only whorehouse in America that loses money. And this lobbying thing we were talking about before has gotten these $800, $900 billion spending bills. They ain't going to go away. Tax cuts are the quickest way to do things. Payroll taxes. But, Mike, I'm more interested in those 400 people that used to work for you that aren't working for you now. California is a toxic environment to run a business mm -hmm. today. I feel, I feel terrible that you've got to do that. I know what it's like to be in a business when they're fighting you and you have to shrink and you have to find a way to survive. What is the single best thing out of these things that could help you? Is it, is it payroll tax or... Well, what's the what's the silver bullet? We might not still have him. On. Do we still have him on the phone? No, he's gone. Okay. Well, the payroll tax cap payroll gains tax. can make a big difference. You can he, be right. A lot more people are talking people. about this pay <coughs> the uh, cut in the payroll tax. A lot more people. Why it's not getting done? Well, I don't the, know. Even Mark Zandy from Economy.com talked to me about it yeah. on the phone. He would add that on top, of course, the sure. existing yeah. stimulus. But well, without getting into the weeds, the problem with that, of course, is where does the payroll tax go? And the average American probably doesn't know where the um, goes if you, re if you read some of the polls that are out there. But it goes for something that is already in the red. Yeah. Um, right. And so, if we're going to say we're going to have a payroll tax holiday, well, that means that we're just going to see our entitlement program, Social Security, Medicare, what have you. Those things are going to go in more into, into the red. And if we had if you want to get in the weeds, but I won't, to say that the really the way to in yeah. encourage the economy going is the marginal tax rates so that small business enter entrepreneurs such as uh, Sal here would be able to say every extra um, bottle that I sell um, of his um, yeah. product, he makes that much more by lowering those rates. Right. You so guys that are thinking... Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no tax. such Thank thing you. as a small business, and we both completely right, 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 that. Right, because right. small businesses are providing 80% of the jobs. Is that small? Absolutely not. And that's what these people in Congress need to do and focus on and forget spending all of our money. It's like taking water from the deep end and pouring it in the shallow end and thinking it's going to be And don't think that you're going to get Social Security to retire on. No. You need to earn your own money mm -hmm. and don't wait for your 401k to come back and sit home and just worry about the stock prices. Earn some new money. Mm -hmm. Retirement is so 20th century. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't retire anymore. You work and then you die. Those are the... <laughs> That's Salvatore, the plan. Salvatore, what do you want to, how much are you watching Washington? What do you want to see? 
What would help you? Well, I, you know, I want to I, I want to tell people that um, it's it's very difficult out there, and in today's economic uh, times that we're in, I think it's um, um, time to get off your butt and, and be creative and, and come up with a uh, a product. What um, have you had to do? What else? Have you, what have you had to do in terms of managing your business as the economy's struggled? Even the high end's been struggling, which you've clearly seen in the retailers. It's it's difficult out there, no uh, no doubt about it. Um, but um, you still have to uh, maintain your focus and, and keep driving to think of different ways to be creative and, and uh, drive business to your to your company. Try to innovate, um, expand, reach out to other markets, offer merchant, you can use authorize.net to allow yourself to accept credit cards from other countries. Beat up the uh, landlord and get the rent lowered hey, in a tough so market. No, no, no. <laughs> right? All right, let's go to Al from New York. He writes, is now a good time to start a small business? Should I wait until the economy turns mm -hmm. around? Look, everybody's yes. nodding yes over here. Do it while, why? But do tell it. me why. Do it while everyone's freaking out because you can poach the best people. I just did this. I started two businesses last week, okay? One of them, I went and and poached the best person Shame for my competitor. <laughs> and that, and I got her for a bargain. That is a fantastic way, th this is the time to start a small business because you can still get money. People are all worried out there, they're living in cubicle life, you know, which is, um, is a, is like this. <laughs> uh, we don't want to do that. And so get out there and take, invest everything that you can and pour your heart into this and you will have, by the time things start coming out and people are spending again, you'll already be in a position and have a product or a service. We've yeah. seen before, history has shown us that when inflation is at its highest, that's when the most innovation has come out. When the unemployment rate is at its highest, that's when the people like Bill Gates and Michael Dell. We, no, uh, we got no inflation right no, now. No, no, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. when times are bad, Pinkos and the smart guys come right. out. All right, George mm -hmm. writes, as a small business owner, we run as, a, as lean as we can in order to survive. Local government has only become larger and less efficient. Waste and lack of oversight is the rule. The government is not doing enough to cut costs, reduce the government size, and hire people that have actually run a business. Every position I have ever held, if we were not productive, you get replaced with someone that can do the job. And that's true, right? That is not the way the government works. People must be held accountable. We just had a hearing with the uh, SEC this past week. And what was the message there? That the SEC, this was a whole Madoff situation, <laughs> sure. and they maybe dropped the ball a little bit on that in their research as far as enforcement and what have you there. But what is their pushback there? The pushback is, well, we need more people. Right. And what was, c compare that to our previous caller who said he's going through tough times and had some hard decisions to make. And what did he do? He lay, laid off people. And what was it, 400 some odd people, I think, that they said. Mm -hmm. so that's the difference between private sector and good, good sector. Private sector, they make the tough decisions and pick up the good people when they can, but have to lay off people public sector says we made a mistake so what do we need to do we need more money and uh, hire more people it's different, it, it, people. It, it, different, different people, people with better with the skills. but george this is this is the no winding zone mm -hmm. the, yeah go to the city council get them to do stuff get them to hire better people but whining about the government is not going to solve your problem or anybody else's problem go do something you know, whether you start a business, I had an uncle who was, we called it, retarded in those days. It's the wrong word now. He went around all day long and he found empty soda bottles, put them in a little wagon, turned them in for two cents at the end of the day. Uncle Ray worked. So this is about working. This is about taking charge yourself. Don't, don't talk about the government. Don't talk about the big businesses. Get off our butts and do it. Yeah, yeah. That is exactly. an excellent, Absolutely. excellent point because people fuss about the government, but where does that get you? It gets you a lot of agita, and that's pretty well, much it. For some reason, everyone's looking for a handout. Dagan, could. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Scott. Yeah, just to make a comment on that, I mean, he's absolutely right. I think the thing that's frustrating to a lot of us in the direction of the stimulus bill. You're the guest that started the skincare company. That's the guy that needs to be rewarded. The caller you had that employed 1,100 people. That's the guy that needs to be rewarded. When we, when we do all this talking about the tax cuts, I think what's important is the philosophy behind it. We've got to reward and revive the animal spirits of the entrepreneurs. These are the guys that are taking risk, investing capital. These are the guys that are creating jobs. They're employing people. And I think that's the frustration a lot of us are seeing with the direction of this stimulus bill is those aren't the people that it's rewarding. Right. We'll leave it there, but we've got a lot more. Half an hour left. We have Congressman Scott Garrett here, Danny Babb and John Rowland. They're fired up and ready to go. Always the number fired up. 
877-249-9626 and a live shot of the Senate floor. The debate on the stimulus package continues. The vote Monday, but more here straight ahead. Sealing your bathroom makes a mess. You need Procock, the only tool that delivers a neat finish in just minutes, again and again. Apply silicone, select your edge, then slide along for a perfect finish without showing the joint. Select a smaller edge for a thinner silicone finish. Procock is perfect for kitchen countertops to seal edges and eliminate those leaking corners. Seal like a professional in seconds. Any edge, any corner, any joint. You get a 16 millimeter corner, a curved edge, and a grouting tip for between those tiles, plus five more edges. As a bonus, you'll get a third applicator for hard to reach places. You'll also get a silicone remover to strip old grouting, plus this tube of adhesive caulk, the complete Pro Caulk Kit, with three tools with 12 edges, silicone remover tool, and tube of caulk, just $19.95, plus shipping and handling. Order now. To order your Pro Caulk, call 1 800 518 7897 or send 1995 plus shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Call 1 800 518 7897. Call now. Monday, the Employee Free Choice Act. It's the legislation causing a battle in the business world. What's behind the controversial bill and what could it mean for your business? We break down the latest. It's where you want to be after work. Fox Business Happy Hour. That email was from Virginia. We love it, but it could be some <laughs> of my kin people, and I just don't know. But thank you for writing. I'll call you later. Welcome back, everybody, to your questions, your money. We're here to answer your questions, 877-249-9626. The email address, again, is feedback at foxbusiness.com. The focus we, is small business this hour. But Tom is on the line from Minnesota. Tom, ask away. Um, the question I have is, uh, thanks for having me on, first of all. Um, the question I have as, as a small business owner is um, I use one of my biggest assets for what, where I borrow the money from, which is my home. And I think a lot of small businesses do, which uh, one of the callers earlier were talking about. But what I'm looking at is why not that with working with the Treasury and the federal government and the banking system, which we kind of have already, is that with the interest rate being at a lower rate for homeowners, whether it's at 4%, why not do it down to 2% or 1% and work margins and give, give uh, vouchers to the banks that we already have money that, we, that they owe us, like Citigroup, City Financial, that kind of a situation? That would be the first part of my question, I guess, is, is why, why can't something like that be implemented in, into some something? Something. Tom, the first part of your question, um, that's going to cost everyone else a ton more money because the difference between what that mortgage really costs and the 2% or the 4% that our lovely government wants to provide is paid for by someone. And that someone is everyone else getting loans, which is going to create higher costs not only on home mortgages, but on small business and entrepreneurial loans. So the, there, there's, a, there's a landslide that's going to occur as a result of that. As soon as you do that, then banks are out there loaning money to anybody with no credit checks. You've got your next bubble on your hands, and the next one will be yeah. uglier than yeah. this one. You right. don't really think there's going to be another credit borrowing related bubble? If you allow me to be the Fed chairman, I can create one for you in about six months. I'd be happy to, happy to do it. But basically, you've got to, you've got to do credit work. You've got to do credit checks. You can't just loan money around because the government thinks it's a good idea. But as soon as the government begins <clears throat> to back that money, then they're going to loan to anybody just like they did when the government was pushing for everyone to be able to own a home. This, the exact same thing is going to happen again. Banks are going to lower their standards. We're going to see another bubble, and it's already starting to happen in the prime markets. And, and your point is exactly on the mark. And what you're talking about there is simply a transfer of wealth from this, this side of the street to the other side of the street. What this country needs, this goes back to your very first question, has America changed, America hasn't changed, is the entrepreneurial spirit. It's like Sal who's taking basically nothing and then creating an in, creating something new out of it, creating wealth there. That is what America is about. Transferring it from one side of the street from the haves to the have-nots doesn't create any new wealth for the country and that's what really what it's all about. And we need to start celebrating people like Sal because they're taking a risk. They're putting their behind on the line here 
And, you know, working in a cubicle is kind of like uh, being stuck in a bathroom with Senator Larry Craig in the stall next door. And people are jumping out of that environment and going to something that they you can create your own stability. But I, I want to jump in here, though, because starting a business and running your own business is not for Different everybody. Thing. I like right. sitting in a cubicle across from Tracy Burns. I like working for business. Now, I've worked for great people my entire career, but I like the security of that job, and I'm not good at managing people. That's that, my problem. That's so it's not for everybody. That's awesome because she knows exactly, Dave knows exactly what it is she wants to do. And when right. you get some a fire in your behind and you know you want to create a product, I knew I wanted to open a tanning bed last week because I love to tan and I'll be buying your products. Um, so, you know, I knew that was going to happen. She knows what she wants. So you just go for it once you know what it is you're good at and what, she, what you're comfortable with. And some people I like to be the person that works for an entrepreneur. You can't do it all by yourself. Some people like to have a star they can follow behind that's got energy and that makes a team. But exactly, it's find out, figure out yourself, do what works for you, but do something. <laughs> And don't wait. Don't wait but for someone else. Some entrepreneurs, no. no offense to Salvatore, but they can be wing nuts because, and you have to be careful who you end up working for because yeah, I take they, they work on That's their right. own because they can't, well, they can't keep a job at a company. Uh, nobody said entrepreneurs are normal. Entrepreneurs <laughs> right. are people that look at the normal way and they say, no freaking way. I am not going to do this. Nobody's going to tell me when to go to work, what to wear, or uh, when to it's, go home at night. You, you know, so. It's, it's so funny. You, you know, I've heard this over and over again, and I've done all the sales myself, and I'll never forget this one uh, one sales um, appointment that I went on, and it was it happened to be with Duty Free. And in Duty Free, they don't generally take on unknown or unestablished brands. And here I am walking in, and the senior people said it was so refreshing to see somebody walk in and just be themselves and, and, and just sell even their if product. You're a wing nut. So this even if you're last, a winner, right. this is right. the last so, frontier for troublemakers. Yeah. Entrepreneurship. Exactly. And you get paid for it. All right. We so got to take a call. On the phone is Bill from Texas. Any wing nuts in Texas, Bill? <laughs> no, a lot, a lot of rednecks, maybe. <laughs> Nothing wrong with rednecks. Right. Yeah, Nothing when, wrong with rednecks. Back when we had an air base here, we had a lot of wing nuts, but they took them all away from us. You got, What's Fox, your question, sir? You, you Fox guys are great. Rutledge, uh, I'm siding up with you and Dan. Yes. If you guys want to cuss, awesome. go ahead on. We're talking a trillion bucks. I believe a guy ought to be allowed a word or three for a trillion dollar foul up like, uh, oh, please, throw a billion, a trillion up in the air and run out from under it. <laughs> What's We're going to be just fine. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you, Bill. What's Rutledge, your question? You, you hang in there. What the question is, I own a radio station in Lubbock, Texas, hometown of Buddy Holly. I've noticed that radio, print, uh, everything is going in the tank. Any ideas uh, uh, for a bailout for an old man that likes to listen to rock and roll music? Uh, any any new uh, besides satellite? I, that's a little too pricey for me. What's going on? Hey, Scott, what do you say? <laughs> Scott, are you listening to uh, radio uh, uh, out in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I think the big issue with... I think the big issue with radio and, and some of the traditional things right now, first of all, on the radio side, the people who listen to rock and roll right now and, and the rock music are primarily young people. The older people are listening to talk radio. They're listening to Fox on, on their satellite radio. As far as the traditional print media and, and other things, obviously everything is, is going online at this point. And I think, again, this gets back down to entrepreneurs allocating capital. You were talking about the wing nuts, Dagan. The good thing about entrepreneurship and wing nuts is generally when the idea, the idea dies, capital doesn't get allocated to it anymore. And you just let it go a natural death. Mm. Something that's going to be a lot more productive will take its place. <coughs> yeah, I've, Bill, I've made, a, I've made a buttload of money in radio, owning radio stations, looking at the local market, and switching from a country to a gospel or a country to a, a, a new age or something, you can pick up revenues, but this is not a market where the revenues are going your way. So this is a survival market. In radio business, you have gross margins of 45, 50, 60 percent. You need to get at the costs right now and just hunker down in there because the advertising market's shrinking up. Or as they say in Texas where you live, it's like uh, trying to make money right now is like trying to make a pig sing. It's a lot of work. The pig don't like it. And when you're all done, the sing is not so good either. <laughs> All right, on that note, call us, 877-249-9626, or email feedback at foxbusiness.com. 
Tracy is speechless with laughter. More <laughs> laughter and answers to your questions straight ahead. Ouch. Tired of getting nicks and cuts from blades that go ooh. Dull after just a few shaves? Introducing Save a Blade, the ingenious razor sharpener that can give you up to 200 perfect shaves from a single blade. Just slide the razor inside, press the button, and in seconds, your razor blade is like new again. Save a Blade's secret is our patented micro honing technology. It works on all razors, even disposables. Independent laboratory testing proved that after 200 shaves, a razor sharpened with Save a Blade was virtually identical to a brand new blade. But that's not all. You'll also receive our deluxe his and hers 18 piece grooming kit. That's right, you get the Save a Blade razor sharpener and our deluxe 18 piece grooming kit, a $50 value for all. Only $19.99. But wait, call now and get our $5 rebate offer. It's like shaving with a brand new razor every time. Call 1 800 701 9527 to order Save a Blade for $19.99 plus processing and handling and get $5 off after mail and rebate. That's 1 800 701 9527. Get fired up. NASCAR's back. We're dueling at Daytona. Next week, the duel at Daytona is only on speed. Two races that decide who makes the Daytona 500 and who's going home. Whoa, speed brings you the duel at Daytona next week, live in Speed HD. I can't wait. Hell yeah. NASCAR on speed. Be there. Monday, the new bank plan. As Tim Geithner gets set to unveil the government's latest proposal, what's the Treasury Secretary's strategy for your tax dollars? We get the latest on the financial rescue package. The first and last name in business, Cavuto. Hi, welcome back. You're looking at a live picture from the Senate floor. The Senate has came back to session about noon today to continue to debate the stimulus bill. They've been going at it for about an hour and 45 minutes now. They expect it to vote on Monday. Again, about a hundred billion dollars trimmed out of that stimulus package, but the total could still be about 820 billion dollars of that bill, that Senate bill, as it moves to a vote and then to conference. Welcome back to your questions, your money. Let's get to another email. Jessica from California writes, should I go into debt to start my own business? If not, when is the right time for me to financially pursue this? Danny, John, to you first. Today. Right, absolutely. First of all, there's no time like the present. We've listed a, you know, a million reasons why this is a fantastic time to go for it. You're, you can kind of strike while no one's expecting you to do so. Uh, and then be prepared for when the, the, the um, economy naturally rebounds. So absolutely. Now, how much debt you're willing to go into is it based on your risk aversement and then how profitable you think your business is going to be and how passionate you feel about it. But I'll tell you, I've never started a business that, was not that, that, that became unsuccessful um, without without having capital funding and if if I was passionate enough about it, it did not matter what happened on the financial side I still made it work should you try to raise cash though some other way before you go into debt no you should well you obviously that you is. should get cash from every I mean, place you can yeah, get mom, it mom dad brother sister well that's you. Up to, that's up to you Danny hates yeah. borrowing from relatives I'll take it from anywhere I can I can get it but look this is a great <laughs> time to start a business now gentlemen this is a straight great time to start a business because first of all you have to learn a lot of stuff to start a business when the market's crappy you can learn for free because you're not giving up business to do it second of all you have to build a brand a brand is what your customer looks at to know what they can count on you for you have to do it for a while before they trust you do it now so the next time you have a hot market you're ready to make a lot of money. Isn't this a lot like having a kid? There's never a right time to have a baby. You just got to yeah. dive in and do it. Well, yeah, I mean, my, my analogy is it's like trying to teach someone, you know, what to do in the bedroom. Throw out the textbooks, jump in the sack, and then see what the heck happens. Well, you, You'll figure it out on the way. But you it, roll it over and go to like sleep. That. What do you mean? <laughs> what? You may roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> right. you, don't wind, you don't wind up in bankruptcy court with it, having it, yeah, how many times relations with somebody. Yeah, but listen, bankruptcy is not the end of the world. I ran two private equity funds. I've had the pleasure of handing the keys to a judge on occasion. It rips your guts out. But I'll tell you what, the next day you get up, you go and you try and do it again. <clears throat> bankruptcy is a way of cleaning the slate so somebody can light their fire again and do it. Do not be afraid to fail. 
I once did. A, so I we once don't did work. Encourage bankruptcy. Sal, but I want to yep, sell um, because you borrowed to start your business. You borrowed yeah, against your well, home. Yeah. Well, you know, absolutely. I mean, John said it takes time to put businesses together. You have to have a whole marketing strategy, a business plan. It just doesn't happen. So I, I definitely recommend to. Get up your butt. Let's do it now. Um, now's the time, and and it does take a year, two years, sometimes longer to you know get your product out there. That's so, why it's always great to, to get your ideas going. Scott, when you already have quickly, a job. Scott. Yeah, I think another point too is when you start a business in times like this, there's less competition. And then once you get to the yeah. point where the market has turned, things are starting to sell. You've got you're already established. Let's get on a call. Good point. On the phone is Leonard from Kansas. Leonard, what do you want to know? I just got a quick question. Is there a safe place where a person can make three or four percent return on your money without losing your money while waiting for the economy to get a firm direction? Scott? Well, let's put it this way. You say a safe place. If you want to put your money aside for 30 years in treasuries, you can get three percent. Anything beyond that, you are going to take some level of risk. Again, I think great opportunities right now are in the corporate bond market. If you use an ETF, your risk is diversified among a lot of different companies. You've got yields on these ETFs now, uh, depending on the quality, somewhere around 5%. It's not perfectly safe, but I, I think it's, it's a lot of safety there. I think you'll get some capital appreciation also. But you definitely want to use an ETF, not individual corporate bonds at this point. There's just too much risk if you go with individual names. John, Uncle Sam needs to borrow some money. Why not lend it to him? He, he does need to borrow money. And I, I, I like the ETF strategy because I don't like people to have to try and pick a specific name when they aren't able to do the homework. But I don't want people to own bonds right now because the rates are so low today that if you need to cash the money in any time before maturity, there's a very good probability the prices will be lower and you'll lose some of your capital. I think bonds are riskier than stocks today. Do you mean today. treasuries or do you mean corporates or do you mean both? I mean all of them. The structure of rates is going to go higher in the next couple of years, so where not you, lower. Where would you put your money right now? Uh, first of all, I would not reach for yield. If the market will only pay you... 2% on a safe investment, suck it up, take the 2% and tighten down. What's Don't safe? A CD? Money market? Well, what's safe is treasury bills, obviously. CDs and banks up to the insured limits, which is quarter million-ish mm -hmm. right now, uh, is, okay, is okay. If you go through the Cedars network, you can insure up to $50 million. So put your money well, in the if bank. Have, if you have $50 million, then you don't need to call in. Yes, but, uh, for sure. Right. I know. All right. Say it. There you go. Where I would we, go ahead. Go ahead. Where I, would disagree, where I would disagree with John just a little bit on what he just said, though, is I don't think you can see the stock market recover if you don't see corporate bonds recover at the same time. They're higher up in the capital structure, and I do think you've got a good opportunity for some capital appreciation there as well. But I think you'll have to see the bonds do well for stocks to recover. All right. Well, we've had a tremendous number of calls over the past several hours, and we're trying to get as many as possible. So keep calling. You still have time. 877-249-9626. We'll be right back. President Obama answers tough questions on the economy as he takes the podium for his first formal press conference. Monday, David Asman hosts Fox Business Special Report, Presidential Press Conference. Are drafty doors and windows forcing you to crank up the heat? 30% of your energy bill is literally flying out the door. Introducing Twin Draft Guard, the double-sided insulating miracle that's guaranteed to create an airtight seal. It's twice as effective because it seals air from both sides of the door. We used a hair dryer to show you how air seeps under the door. Install the Twin Draft Guard to create an airtight seal. Nothing gets through. Patented Twin Draft Guard is so easy to install. Just slide it onto any door. It's that that simple. Twin Draft Guard adjusts to any door or window. Cut the inserts to the length you need. Slip them into the cover and slide onto the door. And close the door for a draft proof seal. Door snakes need constant adjustment. What a pain. But Twin Draft Guard moves with the door. Twin Draft Guard seals almost any door gap on any floor, wood, tile, linoleum. And it easily glides on carpet. It works on windows too. 
The flexible double-sided arms block the airflow for an airtight seal. Use twin draft guard on outside doors to block the cold winds and snow. Insulate garages and basements. Keep out fumes and noise. In hot weather, twin draft guard seals in cool air to lower air conditioning bills. Adjustable twin draft guard is only $19.99. Call now and we'll double the offer. You'll get two twin draft guards for $19.99. It's guaranteed to lower your energy bills. If it doesn't pay for itself the very first month, send it back for a refund. As a free gift, you'll receive the Chrome Finish 5-prong over-the-door ceramic hook. No installation. Just slip it on any door for coats, accessories, and more. It's a $30 value, free. Two twin draft guards and ceramic over-the-door hook, all just $19.99. Call now. Begin saving on your energy bills right now. Call 1-800-808-1705 or go to TwinDraftGuard.com. You'll get two double-sided twin draft guards and the free bonus over-the-door hanger for $19.99. Call 1-800-808-1705 or go to TwinDraftGuard.com. Be a You're looking live on the Senate floor. That is Senator John Ensign as the debate on the stimulus bill moves ahead in the Senate. A vote expected on Monday. And again, all of Wall Street, all investors are watching Washington, the nation's capital. Also Monday, we're expecting a critical speech out of Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner about the administration's plan to right the financial system. Again, it's a sweeping plan, more capital injections, ways of getting rid of toxic assets on bank and financial balance sheets, and again, mortgage rescues to the tune of maybe $100 billion. But we're here for you today. He's had the best graphics thus far, though, I have to say. Of the two hours we've been watching this, he's definitely... definitely Who paid getting... for him? Exactly. <laughs> All right. That's why we call it Your Questions, Your Money. We're here to answer your questions, and we have time for a few more. On the phone, we got Rick from Ohio. Thanks for calling, Rick. What's your question? Yeah, hey, I guess I'm going to be kind of swimming against the current with this, but I'm a, I'm a supporter of the stimulus bill. And I guess everybody's been talking about the entrepreneurial spirit, and one of the things that entrepreneurs always say is you got to spend money to make money. And I, I think in a situation like this, um, it's wise that the government does act. It is one of the dangers of representative democracy. But I guess specifically, that was a, by way of introduction, my question about the stimulus is why, in fact, is it not bigger? than what it is. I know that's not a popular position to take, but when you consider the fact that the banking industry, which is just one sector of, of the country, receiving $700 billion and still climbing for a stimulus bill, which is to address the entire country on all levels, apparently, it is uh, it's Let's just a shade over eight hundred billion more. I, I just feel that why can't that 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 money that goes to the bank that should be the the minimal allotment that's going to end for we need a small business. Well, let's, let's, Congressman, let this is, let Congressman respond to this because there are a lot of smart people, a lot of smart economists who I talk to who do think this is too small to right the economy. Well, I got to start off by saying size does matter, but in this this mm -hmm. case, what we're talking about you here know. is that we're already it spending does. too much. I, I, I know like the little chart where he's talking about a $3 trillion spend -a meter If you talk about that much money, that's more money than we spent on the Louisiana Purchase, the Marshall Plan, World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, the Afghan War, um, most of the expenditure on uh, NASA as well, all rolled up to one. In, in one expenditure, uh, the spend -a meter that it has right here. The second point is, is the COLA has to realize that when Washington spends a dollar, we didn't just make that dollar. Well, we do sometimes. We print it. It came from someplace. It came either from the entrepreneurs around here that want to spend it on their business, or it comes from borrowing. It comes from that guy who says, I need some money right now. So it's borrowing on this generation or next generation. We didn't make that money. So any of these economists who basically go back to think that you can pump money into the economy from Washington, it comes from But someplace. arguably, arguably, tax cuts, if you only do tax cuts, that's not enough to necessarily get businesses to go out and spend more sure, money. It could, because it could be. It could be because what will happen is, is that the businesses around the table here who are having a hard time, like some of the previous callers who were saying, I'm having a hard time, you laid off 400 people, I think it is. Right. Mm -hmm. he, if you tell, told him, we're going to lower your corporate tax rates, we're going to lower, how about this, if we went away, right. did away with the capital gains tax rate entirely, imagine all the investors that say, I'm going to invest huge today, Absolutely. just realizing that we're now competitive again. Absolutely. Well, and one of the things in the plan, 
right, is yeah. the additional rollback, uh, carryback, excuse me, of losses. So yeah. then there is some refund coming to small businesses, potentially, Good. if oh. they carry them yes. back, right? Exactly. So there's something there. Exactly. But, I, I mean, I, I agree. I don't know how this thing could get any bigger and why that would help. Right. It's not spending, it's redistribution. That's the problem. Absolutely. Let's go on the line. Melvin from New York. Melvin, what's your question? My question is, how come we allow uh, the government to act so illegally? The government is, is, a point, is a capping the, uh, the compensation of executives. That's mm -hmm. the function of the board of directors through the, uh, the yeah. shareholders. I'm a shareholder in a company, and I can, on my proxy, which is a lousy but, proxy, by the way, uh, and influence them. But and how but, can he go in and just rule, overrule the board of directors completely? Well, Melvin, and then he can do it for everything. Melvin, I, I mean, the, our people here can answer that, but it's for companies and firms, financial ones only, that take additional exceptional aid from the government. So arguably, if the government is a shareholder, maybe the biggest shareholder in a company, which is a possibility. I am a then, shareholder also. I, okay. I can't do it. But guys, I actually think here. this is unconstitutional because it is government interference between a contract between the private sector and an individual. So I am completely... If you're getting it. government money, it's no longer and we a private have seen, business. And we have That's seen prices and wages set by the government before. Every Price decision control. taken out of a business made in Washington reduces economic growth for the country. And basically what happened is by starting out by saying we're going to take away your ability to fail, which is what all the bailouts are about, what this side is the flip side of this. We're taking away your ability to succeed as well. And the government should never get involved with exactly. it. Exactly. And by we, the way, we, Sal's website. All right, we gotta, we gotta, right. Go. We gotta go. We, we had got such an amazing Sunday. group of questions today. <laughs> Congressman Scott Garrett, John Rutledge, Danny Babb, Sal Piazzola, and Scott Keyes. But thanks for the last four hours, everybody. We will be here next weekend, Saturday. Stay with Call us. Call us again. All right, next week, everybody. Come Monday. Watch Fox Business.